We don't realize that our guilt can make our dogs aggressive or can make our dogs anxious. He couldn't move. And so my first thought was that he was dead. The window sills were destroyed in two of the bedrooms. And we've come home a couple of times to the front door. I've patched it so many times, I haven't even painted it yet. I just repatch it. <laughs> The uh, curtains had been torn down. The curtain rod had been torn down. They were shredded. And once we got over here, he just started hopping the wall. And then I built uh, a wooden top out of lattice and some two by twos. But what he eventually did was he got out of the top somehow. And I really don't know how, except for him jumping five feet in the air and pushing his way through the lattice and kind of pushing the top up. Danny began building backyard kennels that he thought were Mongo proof but the Houdini-like canine mysteriously disappeared. And I went out to see how he escaped from the kennel, and I started looking at it, scanning the whole thing, and I saw some flies buzzing around. And he was so compressed in that little space that he couldn't move. And so my first thought was that he was dead because of the flies and everything, so I turned away, and I looked back at him to see, you know, how I was gonna get him out, and I saw his eye just, he was like this, and his eye was just looking sideways at me and flickering. When I took him in, gangrene had started to set in to his leg, all these pressure wounds all over his body from no blood getting to there for 30 hours. The vet looked at me and said, you know, you really have to consider the cost that it's gonna take to get this dog better and also that you might have to put him down. In the unlikely chance that you don't have to put him down, he's gonna lose his leg. But just as surely as he'd escaped everything else, Mongo succeeded in escaping death. I mean, he had IV drip in him, and we had to carry him out to go to the bathroom at times, and just constant care around the clock. And he just kept getting better every day. Gosh, maybe six months later, outside of the scars, you would just never know. We actually think the extra tension that they put into his leg made him faster and jump higher. <laughs> we were able to crate train him. We were just really afraid of him hurting himself again. We tried to leave him in the house, and maybe Six months, eight months ago, he started getting a little froggy in there again. We'd come home, and the bars would be all chewed up and bent. And there'd be just ridiculous amounts of slobber on the floor. And we couldn't leave him out of the crate because he was destroying the house, and there was just too much in here for him to get himself hurt on. Are we fit to take care of this dog? It, it, you know, and after five and a half years, you don't want to tell yourself that because you've invested so much in this dog and he feels like he's part of our family, but is this worth it? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, Andy. How are you doing? Hey, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. From the moment I walked in, Mongo just starts sniffing at me, but in a way that is more like bloodhounds, which is actually more normal and more common for them to, uh, you know, take you in using a lot of intensity to analyze me and vacuum me away. Is that how he greets you guys? Like, that intense? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement and a lot, of, mm. a lot of energy. He's just all over the place. In that conversation, what would you do? Well, uh, just tell him to quit. Say, Mongo, quit. Oh. So with excitement, you control the moment. Mongo, quit. Yeah. And the dog is all right. See, so he's already in that frequency. Yeah. So to stop the frequency, you have to come up with a different uh, uh, way of relating to it, because it's against their nature. Yeah. Get them all riled up. Get it? Yeah, mm -hmm. riled up. So how can I help you in that tone? We never know what we're coming home to. OK. We've had him in crates, and he's broken out of the crates, numerous kennels. Yes. And he's busted out of those and, and almost killed himself in the process a couple yes. of times. And so. Panic. Panic. Yeah. He had a, um, another incident. Um, when he got out of one of his kennels where he got trapped and he was hurt pretty bad. And after that, he seemed to, to mellow out a little bit. What? You got trapped? Yeah, he got trapped between the back wall of the kennel and the cinder block wall, which is a space of maybe maybe six to seven yeah. inches. It's a bad situation, but it calmed him down. It did for a certain amount of time, and then... So you didn't take advantage of that? Pretty well... Much. You know, they can only... Uh, uh, you know, go through the panic attack for a certain amount of time, then the survival kicked in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so yeah. then, okay, calm yourself down. Well, he was, he was in, the, it was almost like 30 hours. And, oh, uh, oh. and that happens when he was trapped? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so you feel guilty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely did. 
and I got I got chewed out pretty good in the vet's office too, by uh, <laughs> from yeah, one of the but, ladies that was yeah. there. When yeah. you're in front of somebody who has such a high level of guilt, it's just as powerful as a red zone dog. You know, it's just it's somebody's giving this dog access to get that far, and many times we don't realize that our guilt can make our dogs aggressive or can make our dogs anxious. I mean, today is a perfect day to let go. You already got chewed up, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just let it go, otherwise you're gonna keep manifesting that. They invited him, come on, let's go, come on. So they use a very excited approach and then they just close the door when the mind was excited. No wonder this dog felt trapped. So, you see, you're, you, you're pushing, uh -huh. and, and he's pushing. Uh -huh. So I'm just stopping, snapping him out of it. He believes that door open means rush out. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is door open means door open. Doesn't mean come out. Doesn't, Doesn't mean come mean... out. I wouldn't close the door, why? Because he's, he's excited. Mm -hmm. So this dog actually told him, you can't do that. And then the brain comes out with a different solution. So what, what can I do? You stay back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the brain is coming out with his own conclusion of, OK, if I'm going to stay here, I can actually be calm. Mm -hmm. There you go, that's calm. So the nature of the animal is when he's excited, being trapped, is to escape. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the nature of the animal, when it's being trapped and is relaxed, is to wait, you know, so from here. Because he doesn't know yet that if I move away, I expect the same behavior. So I'm breaking it down for him. I'm, I'm going from intimate space, yeah. social space, public space. Huh. The more far away I move, the more powerful I become if it stays there. Look at the breathing change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quiet. Because we have such a strong case scenario of anxiety or panic attack, I have to give the dog something back that has the same power in a different state of mind, which is relaxation. Let's go to the highest level of relaxation you can think of, which is going to sleep. And that's what he did. We just needed to wait. So after that, I would invite him out. To see him go from panicked, confused, to panting, and just to see the whole progression of him helped us see that he can do it, he's going to do it, and we just need to wait it out and be calm and have patience and let him work through it. When Andy and Danny told me, you know, we do have a problem with dogs, I right away went, OK, this is the kind of case that when he goes outside, he scouts around. So uh, we can't have my dogs with him without the muscle. They tell you, look, don't trust me yet, but please do expose me to the situation. Don't give up on me in a way. Just use all the tools that humans have invented so I can go through the process. Outside, Caesar has several other members of his pack leashed and waiting. So I'm going there. <laughs> you guys can see from here. Keep him right there. All right. Mango wanted to kill him. Mango has no doubt about it. I'm going to grab one of them, and I'm going to exterminate them because I want to get rid of this energy that I have. Shh. Crouching down like that is hunting. Okay, so he hunts and he waits for them. Uh -huh. So again, my goal is just for him to give the rear so he can be part of that pack. Not right now, obviously. Now we're 
gonna take him for a walk. The movement creates, a, a, again, a reaction again. Just stay over there, Todd. Yeah. Calmness and assertiveness, that was a problem for me, is, is kind of standing up to my dog. So I, I think maybe he was walking uh, all over me a little bit there, or a lot. Yeah, so you can totally use your feet just to block. Yeah, that's right. So that's better. Now that he is in a much better state, I don't need this thing. Because I want him to learn to do it with the muzzle mm -hmm. and uh -huh. without the muzzle. And this is when a lot of people get really tense, you know? Yeah. Now he yeah. doesn't have the muscle. Hey. But what we have to take in consideration is that he is definitely more tired than aggressive. Yeah. Uh -huh. So because he's in a tired state, it makes sense to take the muscle off because tiredness is a muscle now. Oh, that's a nice dog right there. I want him to see it. Normal. They are. Uh, uh, the, uh, the brain is getting really excited about shh. Hey. Now the expression is through a bark. <laughs> shh. Hey. I'm utilizing what the uh, environment is giving me and teaching my dog how we're going to relate. Yeah. He's not calm like everybody else, uh -huh. but he's not moving forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, I keep in mind what I want, the yeah. big picture, but this is what he can give me. Shh. Hey. The more far away they are, the more excited they get. The closer they get, look, now that he's closer to these guys, he doesn't want them anymore because yeah, he, wants the, one he that wants the one that's far away. Yeah. Everything that I teach them, I want them to do it. Hey. So Mango can see that it's not just me, it's also them now participating mm -hmm. on putting the muscle on and feeling good about wearing the muscle and then taking him outside yeah. so he can practice what he just did with me. Right there, touch, there you go. Danny needs to work on assertive energy. He can't really be assertive because he feels bad and feeling bad is weakness. Just claim that, that path and you're just passing by. You're doing fantastic. The one who really embraced calm and assertive was Andy. From the moment you grabbed the leash, nice. It was like, perfect, 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 perfect. So you don't need me, you just watch her, how, <laughs> how she do it. <laughs> this is good, look. We got a lot of great stuff today and um, a lot of homework, a lot of stuff we need to work on, but um, we'll definitely need some help bringing it home. <laughs> <laughs> The past month since Caesar's been here, Mongo's shown incredible improvement with his crate. We usually have to still wait him out, minimally 15 minutes. We haven't had to leave him in the crate, which is great. Um, we put him in there when the door is open. He relaxes, calms down. We wait for that sigh that Caesar talked about that shows total submission. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't even get out of the crate when we leave. He's just content in his own little world down there. I was floored. I was, um, it actually makes all that hard work that we were doing, all that patience and all the sitting and waiting for Mongo to wait and get calm. It feels like it paid off knowing we're heading in the right direction with Mongo. I am the dog whisperer.